Hello YouTube. <clears throat> I'm going to do a uh, quick update today. I uh, was doing a project to upgrade my uh, 2009 Mac Pro computer. Um, got one of the cheese graters they call it. Uh, I like the design. Very uh, updatable but you know just haven't had too many reasons over the years to do that. I bought it in uh, I think 2009 actually. Um, well doing some research lately on these different projects I found out that I could uh, update uh, with a, a firmware update make the uh, 2009 you know a 5 comma 1 instead of the 4 comma 1 version that I have uh, because essentially it changes it from being a 2009 to a 2010 and um, because I've been stuck on uh, the Mac OS um, was El Capitan it was the last version that I could update to. Well, if you do this uh, firmware update, um, you have the ability to update the processor. So I bought a new one of those off of eBay for, I think, $60. Um, a 6-core, 3.3 gigahertz chip uh, coming from a, a, a you know a quad-core, uh, 266 gigahertz chip is what I bought the thing with originally. Um, so a pretty good spec bump there for for the price because uh, I had been you know considering purchasing a new computer for quite some time but uh, you know these these little upgrades that you do to it you know really breathes new life into it so I put some some more RAM in it um, that's the other thing as soon as you put a new chip in there the clock speed of the RAM um, is tied to the clock speed of the chip as well so uh, in theory I should be able to bump up my clock speed to um, 1333 uh, versus the uh, I think it's 10 600 that it's you know running right or running right now you know whatever it actually came with um, so in doing that process um, you know the hardware piece you know that that super easy uh, guides on iFixit and um, I did that and booted the machine up so, uh, very nice and snappy and then I moved into uh, trying to upgrade to um, High Sierra and that's where the problem began uh, because my particular version uh, the, the way that I had things set up I was using a uh, SSD as the main operating system drive uh, and a hard drive is where I had the user folder well the upgrade process uh, for High Sierra um, try to convert the SSD to a new file system AFPS I guess that came along with it uh, didn't didn't poke enough into it and do enough research before I did this or else I probably should have seen this coming um, so you know long story short on the high Sierra I did finally uh, with a USB installer get that reinstalled um, was able to format the uh, solid-state drive that I was using to that new version um, uh, AAFPS I think it is uh, and then finally install uh, High Sierra on it and then uh, was able to because I had my user folder on that separate drive recover you know all of those files essentially so um, I'm, I'm actually back on it running right now so I lost all my settings for this you know open broadcasting software so I had to reset all of this up uh, but you know didn't didn't take too long less than a day and I'm back to you know 99% where I was before uh, so I wanted to do this video because uh, one of the things that I had taken for granted uh, was uh, I had a, a true crypt container I know it uh, lost uh, supportability several years ago uh, they stopped stopped supporting it told people to move over to you know BitLocker you know whatever the other programs are out there that are doing this well I had created this container uh, small container file uh, to keep passwords in uh, you know I had a list of you know the the commonly uh, used sites that I go to and rather than me you know remembering all of them or you know entrusting them to the uh, password saving features of the of the browsers and things like that um, yeah. I created a uh, uh, a folder or a, a true crypt file and password protected it and uh, so when I did this update I completely lost uh, TrueCrypt and it wouldn't um, I went to find it again and so that I could open and, and recover those those passwords and uh, the installer wouldn't work so what I'm going to show you here today is in case this happens to anybody else 
uh, what do you do? Because, uh, you know, in High Sierra, it's telling you, hey, it's not supported, uh, and the installer wouldn't let me install it. So uh, I've done a couple of things like this before, so uh, I kind of had an idea of what to do. So I went in, and uh, here I'll show you the first, the, there it is. There's the, uh, you just typed in to Google TrueCrypt. This is, this is the program here. This is the website. Um, when you get to the website, you know, it shows you the Windows uh, page down here at the bottom. You can click here if you're using something different. So this is where the OSX files are. Uh, so you download that um, DMG file, uh, the installer package. And uh, what you do, once you've got that uh, DMG file, you double click on it and uh, it'll mount it. And um, once it mounts it, I'll show you, um, you see the package file here. Well, you can copy that package file over um, out of the uh, container that it's in uh, onto the, you know, even your desktop. And um, what you can do is double click it. And uh, I think it's, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry. You don't even need that button. It's right here. Show package contents. So you copy the this contents folder out of the package uh, because essentially it's it's like a zip file. Uh, so you want to uh, copy that contents folder out, and then this distribution uh, file here is what you're going to end up changing. So edit that with uh, text edit, and uh, essentially this first piece right here is uh, what I ended up changing there's two lines where it actually uh, mentions uh, the version of, of uh, Mac OS that it's looking for I think it was um, 10.4 uh, so I changed the two lines uh, to, to, to the current version that I'm running high Sierra is 10.13.5 in that line right there and then right here same thing that's what it's looking for um, and uh, save that out and then what I did was uh, just went ahead and all right so what I did I uh, created another folder called true crypt or rather let's just call it TC test <clears throat> the contents folder is where we edited that distribution file uh, you put that inside of this folder and then you change the name and what you do is you append the end of it with that M E K G and when you do that it's going to ask you if you really really want to say add so as soon as you do that it turns it into that uh, you know installer package and then when you run it there you go it will actually give you the 7.2 uh, TrueCrypt installer, and um, it does work. I, I was able to recover my my uh, files from inside of that container. Um, not suggesting anybody use this pr production wise or continue to use it. It's it's obsolete. Uh, but if you do need to recover any of your files and still remember the passwords, that's usually the challenge. Um, you can, uh, under even the latest OS, uh, get uh, the true older TrueCrypt. Um, installer to work by doing this so i uh, hope this helps somebody uh, it would have helped me if i could have found one so have a good one